sniff, yeah, but I blow dro. Bank roll on loco. Still ride with that four four. Don't let my PO know. I don't ride with no four four. Just joking. Man, you already know what it is. Jake Williams, let's live life, and we're back. Got a good video for you guys today. So if you've caught my last few videos, thank you. Now, if you have not, make sure you go check those out. So I did a sit down with my homeboy, Mark, somebody that I was incarcerated with. Mark is currently dealing with lung cancer after being released from 19 years of incarceration. So please keep Mark in your prayers. In that video we did, he got into how we met. And we actually met through, well, a series of fights that I got in. And after the last fight, he approached me. Like a lot of guys did. A whole lot of guys actually approached me after that fight. I was like, yo, I got a number of respect for you. It's, you know, kind of crazy to see how you carry yourself. But, hey, you handle your business. And in that interview I did with him, he spoke of this blood dude that I got to fight with. Now, there's a big mis... I don't know if you call it misconception, misunderstanding, whatever you want to call it, that being a neutron, somebody that is not gang affiliated, that you're not going to be able to get a one-on-one -on -one when it comes to the gangs. That is usually the case, but not always. There is exceptions when it comes to this type of stuff. One of those exceptions being that the gangs, they're not what runs everything. There's somebody that oversees that gang. That guy that oversees that gang, he's the one that calls the shots. They move when he tells them to move. So if you're cool with that guy, you don't really have to worry about all of them. And if they move on you without his permission, then he's going to deal with them. And it does happen. I've had it happen. So what we're doing today is we're going to get into that story. It's quite a story. It's such a good story. Me and this dude rumble twice. In this situation, as you heard him say, I won both go-rounds. But it wasn't that easy. There was so much more that went on behind the scenes when it comes to it. There's so much that always goes on when it comes to these gangs and these gang members. What led up to it? Why were we beefing? How did these two fights end? What happened afterwards? What can you expect as a non-affiliated guy that's in prison? And dealing with the gangs. We're going to break all that down in today's story. I'm glad I'm free. I'm glad all that's behind me. Never would I do anything to jeopardize this beautiful life that I live. Even if I was walking down the street homeless with a backpack on. I'm still in a better position out here than I would be if I was in there. With all of that being said, you know how to seen it. You know how to lived it. So, let's relive it. So real quick, before we get started, I have two great interviews coming at y'all this coming week. You're never going to guess in a million years who the two guys are that I have to interview this weekend that I'm going to drop on Sunday and drop on Monday. It's going to be a treat, to say the least. Now, I have told y'all, gangs run the jails. Gangs run the prisons. That is a true statement. Let's get deeper into it. Even though... I've said that, and I still say that. If you want to be technical, there's usually one guy behind that gang. One guy that oversees all of them. And he is responsible for the way things run. Now, there's times I've seen it just be completely chaotic. Because the guy that's overseeing them, well, he's allowing a whole lot of stuff to go on. He's allowing robberies. He's allowing these dudes to just put down on people and run down on people and just extort people. And then something happens. Gang task force comes through, the goon squad, uh, gang investigators. Prisons have gang investigators. A guy that's job is to investigate gangs, who's in the gangs, what the gangs are doing. Document everybody. You'll see them shaking down cells, going through letters, looking for any type of knowledge, any paperwork, anything related to that gang, right? Gangs have now been running the prisons and jails out here for about 20 years. I have dealt with these situations more times than I'd even like to admit. It's not a lot of people I know that did not have to deal with the gangs at some point. I don't care who you are. Even if you have another gang, you're going to have to deal with some type of gang stuff. Not being in a gang, you're 100% 
at some point or another, going to bump heads with either an individual, several individuals, or the entire gang. Like I told y'all, I have a homeboy that is currently locked up that is at war with these gangs. I've had several, and when I say several, a lot of different situations where I got into it with gang members. I told y'all at my first day at Greensville, I was actually jumped by three dudes on the basketball court. You fast forward, I've been there a couple years at this point. I've been known. I've, you know, put in my work, but it really doesn't matter how much work you've put in. The prison flips constantly. When I say it flips constantly, if you've been there five years, and five years from now, 70% of the people that knew you or knew your reputation, they're no longer there. Guys go home, guys get transferred. So every now and then, you're going to run into a guy or a group of guys that don't know who you are. They don't care who you are. What you did five years ago don't matter because they weren't here. And there's going to be somebody that tests you. That's how today's story starts. At this point in time, as far as I know, the blood still run them prisons. And they have for a very long time. Now, it doesn't matter what set you're with. You can be nine trade bounty hunter, hunter. You can be brim gang. It doesn't matter. When they're in the system, they put the whole what the set is. Yeah, they still rock within their set, but they're all one. They all come together because, as we know, there is strength in numbers. With new dudes coming and going, you know, constantly coming in and out the prisons. You're always going to get guys that just feel like they have something to prove. Now, I've told y'all, out here, we are not segregated. We do not politic according to race. You can kick it with whoever you want. White, black, it doesn't matter. But this is the facts, and anybody that tells you different is lying. In Virginia, in our prison system, the weakest when it comes to race on the totem pole is the white guys. Hands down. The majority of the white guys that are locked up, the majority, these days and times, are locked up behind theft, drug-related offenses. Most of them were not in the streets going hard. I'm not saying there's not dudes. There's plenty of dudes that are in there with bodies. There's plenty of dudes that were out here in the streets that were rocking out. Dudes that were really about their life. But those dudes usually end up 23 and 1 in supermaxes. Wallace Ridge, Red Onion, they're locked in cells all day with no communication with anybody else, and that's their life. You make it to Greensville, this place has over 3,000 inmates. It's insane. It's like a city within a city within a city. There's so many men. I started watching, and around 2007, there was a major shift in the inmates and the type of inmates that were coming in. You could take, say, the white guys and... You had a lot of white guys prior to that that were there for violence. Around 2007, 2008, dudes start talking about heroin. They start talking about the dope game. And the one thing that I realized real quick is dudes that were once just smoking blunts and drinking 40s are now shooting dope on the streets. It's like every other dude I met that either I knew or didn't know had a history with dope. Why are you locked up? Man, I got caught stealing. You know, I was out there doing my thing. I was hustling. Then I got hooked on dope. What happened to you when I was da-da-da? Then I got hooked on dope. What happened to you? Da-da-da. Then I got hooked on dope. It was like a remix time and time again. Everybody's story started leading back to heroin for the most part. And I'm talking probably 90% of the guys that were from the streets turned to the dope game. Tried to make a little money. And then at some point, they... And then at some point that wasn't doing it, so they started shooting it. With the dynamics changing and the caliber of men coming in changing, other races took that as an opportunity to start victimizing guys. At one point it was just, you ride down on the chomos, guys of that caliber. But when these guys, you know, the gang members would go with these white guys and they wouldn't stand up for themselves. It made it that much harder for the guys that would. Guys like myself, guys like Mark, guys like Jacob Aquino, guys like Philly. It makes it harder for us because if they chump that guy and they chump that guy and they chump that guy and they're all white, then when they look over and they see me, they're automatically going to assume because I'm white 
that I'm the same as that guy. So when these guys not fight for themselves, these guys not defending themselves, these guys not be willing to, to bleed or make somebody else bleed, they're making life for me and for other dudes that are solid hard. We get all these new guys in. 2007, 2008, it is like a revolving door. A giant gang war popped off up there where it was just all out melee and they shipped hundreds of off to different prisons, off to supermaxes. They tried to split these gangs up and shift them everywhere. You can't stop new gang members from coming in. These beds got to be filled. Got all these beds open. You think they're just going to be open and the prison's not going to get paid for inmates? No. As they send 20 of these guys to this prison, they're going to send 20 guys from that prison here. So all they did was recycle the gang members. When a large majority of the guys that are coming in are gang members, it's pretty easy to figure out that you got rid of a bunch of gang members, but here comes a whole bunch more. Now, for a few months now, I have, after all this, this big, that we talked about in the video with Mark, after this big gang riot pops off, we start getting all these new guys, all these new faces. Some of these guys I know from doing time with, but 99.9% .9 of these guys I've never met before. In comes a guy that not only I didn't like, but pretty much everyone except for gang members didn't like. Tall black dude by the name of Bop, B-O-P. Let me try to describe Bop for you. Bop was caramel complexion, had waves, was always brushing his hair, maybe six foot, six foot one. Kind of athletic build, but the athletic build type that just didn't lift weights. Like you could tell at one point he was really athletic, but he stopped being athletic. That's the best way to describe Bop. Bop loved to play basketball. Bop also was very, very very loud. This dude originally started off in my pod and my cellmate at the time, the dude I had in the cell with me at the time, was infamous for store boxing. He goes to store boxes, all this stuff up, and I'm not going to put his name up, but he goes to store boxes, all this different stuff from dudes and gets into debt. So they won't loan him anything else. And he has slowly, each week, agreed after getting beat up several times, he did get his ass kicked behind this, but he's agreed to each one of these guys that he owes money, commissary, each week. I'm going to bring you this amount, this amount, you this amount. So none of them will give him anything. We get all these new guys in our pod, and we get a whole bunch of new bloods. They've got to make money. They are infamous for setting up store boxes. Not really somebody you want to store box from, because if you do not pay him, you don't have to just deal with him. You've got to deal with other gang members. My cellmate goes to this blood dude and store boxes, all this stuff, knowing that he's already in debt and there's no possible way come canteen day that he can pay this guy back all this stuff. I'm in school at this time. I'm taking plumbing class. They come in the cell and they beat him up. I felt some type of way about it because they went in my cell. Most of y'all be like, who cares? It's just a cell. There are rules in play. You do not go in. If you're going to go in my cell and do something to him, you have to come to me first. Otherwise, you've pretty much just said, F me. We're going to do what we want to do. And we don't care if we do it in J's cell. We don't care if the guards see what's going on over here. And when we're done, they come and shake J's cell down and catch J with a knife. Catch J's tattoo stuff. Get J in trouble. Because when he wasn't here, we went in the cell. So I had something to say about it. Like, they beat this dude up. Okay, I get that. But y'all went in my cell without my permission. The lead blood at the time, I'm just going to call him Trail, right? He's got a name, he's got a nickname, but I don't know his status in DOC. I don't know if he's still in there. Me and Trail have been bidding for years. When that whole thing popped off on the yard, they took Trail and sent him to another building, and they turned that building into the kitchen building, and they put Trail right back over there. Trail was originally in the pod next door, but he ends up in my pod. I come in that day from school. My celly is all willy lump lump, knotted up, looking like it had a full-out peanut allergy. Just lumps all over his face, beat the hell up. I come, I asked him immediately, who came in the cell, man? He tells me, boop, 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 and bop. I already didn't like bop. I had seen bop extort certain dudes. I'd seen him slap a dude one time. Loud. I don't like them loud dudes, man. I just do not like loud for nothing type guys. If you got a reason to be loud, be loud. But to just always be loud, I hate it. That's why I don't do drama. I don't like the loudness. 
I know I can't just go push up on these dudes. If I do, I'm going to get jumped. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. Ain't nobody stupid over here. I'm not scared, but I'm not stupid. There's a big difference now. So I go straight past them and go to the head of the chain. I go to Trail. Hey, Trail, let me holler at you real quick. I go to his cell. He lives in my pod about eight cells over from me. What's good? You already know what's up, huh? What's up? Your homeboys, your pups, your guys that are under you came up in my cell and be my cellmate up. Yeah, I know. He owed money. Why y'all ain't holler at me, man? And they can't just run at you. I mean, you know the politics, man. You know how it goes. Like, if you got any respect for me, you should have came and said, hey, Jay, your cellie owes money, man. We got to have him. You need to either send him down here, send him out on the yard. We don't want to disrespect your cell. I said, but y'all didn't do that. These dudes just came up in the cell. These, you're right. That's on me. My bad, man. I'm going to holler at them and let them know in the future. I ain't mean to disrespect you. Me and this dude have a good rapport. We're respectful to each other. We have no issues with each other. Never have. Been bidding for years. When you've been around somebody for years, y'all come to have a certain level of respect because you have seen what each other will do in moments of chaos. You know what each other is capable of. Me and Trail were cool, really cool. Him and Mark were even closer because Mark knows Trail from the streets. You're right, man. That's my bad. So what are we going to do? It won't happen again, Jay. That's where you got to leave it. If I keep pushing it to the point of, no, I want something to happen, then I'm putting him in a position to tell him, You've got to beat your own people up for going in my cell. He's not going to do that when he told them to do it. He apologized. My bad. That was wrong on my behalf. You're right. I'm dead ass wrong. That's the respect me and him had. So I guess he says something to the dudes. Look, moving forward in the future, that shit ain't cool. Jay wasn't feeling y'all going in, your, in his cell. Everybody understood that, right? Except for this loud ass dude, Bob. So we're walking the yard one day and I'm walking with somebody and he walks by me and I don't remember his exact words. I just know that whatever he said was disrespectful and it was directed towards me. And it was me and one dude and we were walking in passing. It was like filming like five or six dudes as we walked by us. And I just caught the something, 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 soft ass white boy, blah, blah, blah. I want to tell on like it was more or less like trying to make it seem like I went behind their back and told on them or something. Well, no, in reality, I don't have to answer to you. I'm going to go to the person that you answer to. I'm not gang related, so I don't answer to nobody but God. So he makes his little comment, and I'm walking my homeboy, and it kind of catches me off guard. It takes my brain a second to catch what this dude just said. Is he talking about me? But he didn't make eye contact with me. He didn't look directly at me and say it. He kept his head forward as he was walking, and he said it. So I kind of stopped for a second. And look back at my homeboy that I'm walking with. It's like, yo, no, nah, hell no. Nah. Come on, you tripping, dog. What are you doing? He heard what they said, but he's not trying to, he's not trying to get caught up in all that. This dude has been down a very long time. He's never coming home. He finally got to Greensville from being locked in a cage 23 and 1. He's not about to let me make something pop off in the yard and get him sent back to the mountains, which are where these high, high custody prisons are at, right? So I stop and I look back at my homeboy's like, yo, come on, Jay, chill. Come on, dog, you tripping. So we're walking. I'm like, yo, dude, let's talk. He's like, nah, man, that, let that shit go, man. It's too many of them. You already know. Look around you. The yard is filled up with blood. You gonna, that's a crash and burn mission. That's a dummy mission, dog. Who cares what he's saying? He ain't put his hands on you. He's old school, right? Yeah, you right, man, you right. Doesn't say anything else. I start hearing little things from other people. Guys love to gossip. I've told you, prison is like a soap opera. It's like a college campus. It's like a novella. It is constant gossiping. Several different dudes come back to me now, and they're telling me, which this is a no-no. Gangs find out you're talking about, they're going to beat you up. But dudes are coming to me, and they're telling me, dude stays with your name in his mouth. Who? Oh, dude bop. You say about me? Just made little comments. I guess somebody told him about the fight you got in with such and such. And he made some slick remark about, ain't no, I ain't gonna never let no white boy be me. He got the right one head. Let him try me like that. I'll dust his ass off. Now I'm in my feelings. But I can't go say anything to anybody. Because if I go say something, 
they're going to want to know my source. Who told you that? So me saying, and dude told me when he told me, but don't say nothing, Jay. Like, why would you tell me something and tell me don't say nothing? No, I'm getting my feelings, but I can't say nothing. So in him saying that, I have to honor the fact of don't say nothing. But now I went from not liking Bop, hearing Bop's comment to hearing my name is in Bop's mouth. Now I really don't like Bop. This dude is, I guess, playing me for soft. And what he's doing, and I've seen him and many before him do it, is he's not playing me for soft. Nah. No. He doesn't. I don't know, maybe he did. But in my mind, I'm thinking, he don't want no wreck with me, man. I'll beat his ass. I've seen him in a couple little altercations, and I wasn't impressed, right? And just seeing what he did to others, that shit didn't impress me. Didn't strike no fear in me. But he has got an army behind him. He can say whatever he wants, right? Because he's gang affiliated. He's an active gang member who falls up under all these dudes who at any given moment, if I swing on him, it's a dummy mission. Before I can even fully connect, I'm probably going to get hit six times and I'm going to get stomped out unconscious. And once I'm on the ground, since I'm not a gang member, it's anything goes. They can kick my teeth out, stomp me till my eyeball pops out of socket. They can stab me. They can do whatever. Now, they're not supposed to move on me unless they're given the order to move on me. But if I just run up, boom, and swing on one of them, oh, it's go time. They don't need permission at that point because I've activated the beef. Continues to run his mouth. See, he's, he's not in my pod. Let's make this clear. I'm in 100 pod. He's upstairs in 300 pod. But anytime I see this dude, whether it be in the chow hall or going to visit or when we go to the gym or on the yard, anytime I see this dude and he sees me, he starts mumbling little shit. He's looking at me. He's looking for trouble. He's looking for smoke. I want the smoke. I don't want smoke. I want the whole entire fire. I want it all. His little comment made it back to me, but I can't do nothing about it, and it's, it's under my skin. So I'm trying to figure out a way that I can eventually get it on with this dude, because I don't believe you. You need more people. So I sit and ponder on it. We get to arguing one day on the yard. He's made his little slick comments here and there. I'm letting it slide. And each time I let it slide, it feels like something inside of me is dying. I'm feeling like a whole entire bitch boy because I'm not taking off on this dude. I'm really starting to just, I'm questioning myself. Have I gone soft? Am I just going to let this ride? He said something one day and I was, I, I was walking. One, two. I think it was like three dudes I was walking with. And I stopped in my tracks. I'm like, yo, what's up, man? And what's up? I'm like, but you always got something to say, but you always say it when you got people with you. You're not trying to see me one-on-one, one-on-one, I'll beat your ass, you know what I mean? Trail's walking with them, they were getting ready to hold a meeting, it's like a Sunday, and Trail says, me and him are getting ready to go at it right then and then. Trail's like, yo, yo, chill, chill. This shit, this shit ain't about to happen. Y'all need to stop, stop all this bickering back and forth. There's money to be lost. Me and him fighting the guard, if we pop off right then and there, the guard in the tower is going to see it. And everybody that's with Trail, and everybody that's with Bop, including Trail and all the other guys, are going to get locked up if me and him get to rumbling right in the middle of the yard. There's no way for us not to be seen. That guard is in the tower. She's got an AR. She's looking around. She looks over. There's a fight taking place. She's going to radio it. She's going to take descriptions. Guards are going to come on the yard. They're going to lock everybody up in the vicinity of the fight, right? So me and dude, we get ready to square off, get ready to fight right in the middle of the yard. Trail's like, stop. I told you me and Trail have a rapport. Trail shuts it down. Nah, 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 nah. Y'all ain't about to do this. Jay, let me holler at you. Me and him walk off. He tells his homeboys, I'll catch up with y'all. I tell my homeboys, I'll catch up with them. Puts his hand on my shoulder. This is my dude. He gets walking. What's up? Would you mind? You know what's up, man. You heard what dude just said, man. He just, you know, Bob's just loud, man. I'm not feeling that, man. I said, dude stays with my name in his mouth. So... Say something to him, man. If you don't say something to him, this is what I want to do. Just let me and him go at it. Promise me you won't let nobody jump on me. You got the power to keep the rest of the gang from getting involved. I, mean, I don't know about that, man. We ain't really into, you know, letting dudes beat up our own. I can't just kind of let you have him, Jay. I'm like, what you mean, man? Like, the dude is causing trouble. Do you not see that? He's running his mouth. I'm not the reason that if this pops off, y'all are going to lose money and people can get locked up, people can get shipped. He is. 
He's always starting shit. And you told my son, don't do nothing. Let him slide. Let him ride. Like, I'm just supposed to just not let him, like, let him run his mouth and not do nothing? I can't do that. You know, it's, it's, it's under my skin. That's what I'm going to do, Jay. I'm going to holler at him, right? And I give you my word, there won't be nothing else said. If this dude says anything, listen now. He said, if this dude says anything else, I'll let y'all shoot the one. Bet. It's all I needed to hear because Bop is loud and he is 100% going to say something in the future. It's the best possible outcome, which is what I want to do is fight at the time. It's definitely going to take place now that he said this. So we spin back towards the front and he tells Bop, hey Bop, come here, let me holler at you real quick. Bop comes over there, what's up? That shit with you and Jay, whatever y'all got going on, that's dead. Don't say nothing else to the man. If you say anything else to him, Y'all gonna shoot it out. You and him gonna rumble if you say anything else. You understand me? I'm telling you, leave this shit alone. I don't know what your problem... His problem with me is that I had went and said something to Trail about them running in my cell. That was his problem with me. I hadn't done anything to this dude. But he tells him, if this happens again, man, if you say anything else to this man or about this man, I'm telling you, you and him are gonna rumble. Wherever it's at, whenever it's at, it's gonna pop off and I'm telling everybody else not to get involved. So now... I'm happy because I know he's going to do what he always does. He's going to run his mouth to somebody or he's going to run his mouth to me. And now I've been given, you know, the go ahead. Do just cool with it. We don't usually let outsiders fight ours, but he runs his mouth. So we're going to see where he's at if he does it again. A little bit of time passes by. He's still cutting me glances, still giving me dirty looks, but he's not saying nothing. We pass each other on the yard one day, and at the front of the building, when you come through the gate and you come around the side of the building, there's like a little cubby hole right there, and there's a urinal. And there's a water faucet. Hasn't worked in forever. Neither has the urinal. But you can slide up in this little section of the building right there, and if you wanted to, you could get the rumbling. The guards can't see it. The tower can't see it. You could get it on. The only thing you'd have to worry about is a guard coming outside and walking around the side of the building. Dude used to congregate. In that little cubbyhole area right there, they would smoke weed. You could still smoke cigarettes at the time. Dudes would stand in that little cubbyhole and drink homemade wine. It was also an area where if it was real hot in the summertime, being in that cubbyhole beside the building offered a little bit of shade. Otherwise, prisons don't have trees. Most prisons don't have canopies. There's nowhere to go to escape that brutal ass heat. So people will congregate and hang out in that little L shape right there at the corner of the building where that urinal is and where that water fountain is. To beat the sun rays. Keep that hot house heat, heat off your neck, right? So I'm spinning tracks with a dude. Spinning tracks with a dude. And there's a bunch of... There's Bob and a whole bunch of dudes standing around by where the urinal's at. Everybody that's standing there with him on the day that this pops off is fully aware of the fact that if Bob says something else, me and Bob are going to have it out. If they jump in the fight while me and Bob are fighting, then they are to get violated. Violated means... Trell is going to have three dudes ride down on them or however many dudes he decides. And they're going to jump that guy for a certain amount of time until he's gotten his point across and the violation has been served. We come by and there stands Bop. Probably, I don't know, probably eight, maybe more. Could have been more. I remember there being roughly somewhere between eight to ten guys standing there. And there was a whole bunch of guys standing there that didn't have anything to do with these dudes. They were lighting up their little sticks of weed, passing, roll up cigarettes back and forth, doing what we do in the summertime. And as we come by him, he makes his comment, salt as white boy. Like, just barely mumbles it, but he mumbles it enough that when I walk by him, I can hear the section of sidewalk, it's a dirty-ass, dusty-ass track on the wreck yard. And then when it comes up, it's sidewalk. And you can walk down the sidewalk, and there's a building beside you and chain-link fence in front of you. And then, boom, you step off the sidewalk back onto the track. As I'm walking, he makes his comment, and I tried, I swear to God, on my kids, on everything I love, I tried to let it go. I couldn't let it go. He had done it too many times. I didn't want this to happen. I, I was, at this point, struggling with myself and the violence inside of me and the anger I had pent up from my childhood and my life and just life in general. I tried to let it go. I walked about 15 feet. And at the time, me and Mark weren't really, we weren't cool like that. We had talked in passing, but he's sitting on the bleachers with some other dudes. I keep walking, and I guess it just pushed me. 
is the best way to describe it. My mind said, like, I'm telling myself don't do it, but my brain, like, took control of my body and sent me in that direction. And before I even fully agreed to do anything, I turned around and ran in his direction. I think that he knew when he said it, the shit was going to pop off. Because as I turned around and took off towards him, he had already stepped back and tried to, I guess, do his best to plant his feet and square up. I run up on Bop, and Bop was, would not be the first dude I'd seen that fought like this. He wouldn't be the last. Bop had a fighting style where instead of squaring up and putting a fist up the block and all, he leaned back, like way back, and would try to lean way back and throw punches. I rush Bop, and I just come in with everything I got and start launching punches on him, just swinging on him. And he's leaned back as far as he can, and he's got his arms out just swinging. And there's that section of sidewalk right there that's got about a seven to eight inch lip that you have to step up onto the sidewalk. And as I'm rushing, Bob, Bob's backing up. He doesn't trip. His foot clips and he tries to step up on the sidewalk. And when he does, I just wrap around his stomach, take him to the ground. We hit the ground. The dust, poof, fluffs up from around him. And now we're up beside where the urinal is in the L shape of that wall right there. And I just go on him. I just start wailing on him. Just giving him everything I've got. Bob caught a whole lot of frustration that came from me being incarcerated. He caught a lot of anger that I had pent up inside of me that didn't belong to him. But 70% of that ass whooping he caught belonged to him. He didn't have a chance. He had did his best to lean back and try to throw them punches, but it was an easy win. I just When he leaned back, I put my head low and just wrapped around his waist, took him to the ground. Bop is much taller than me. He's wider than I am. The first time I hit him, you see in the excitement in his eyes, leave. You saw the, I don't know, the everything that was there before went blank. It was like I knew when I caught him with it to the side of his face that this was pretty much over at that point. Cock back again, boom, boom, boom. I take off on him. This lasts not for a long time. If you've ever been in a fight, a minute is a very long time in the fight. But this whole altercation with me hitting Bop lasted probably less than 20 seconds. In those 20 seconds, I'm throwing as many as I can, and I just fuck Bop all the way up. Knot him all the way up, knot his eyes up. You know, give him everything he deserved. He deserved everything he got. So if you're watching, you deserve what you got. Dudes are told not to stop, you know, not to jump me, but that don't mean they can't stop it. I don't remember who it was, but dudes start grabbing me and pulling me back off of him. It takes me a second to regain my composure the last thing i want to do when i get up is get off me and start trying to fight with them because now they're going to jump me now i've come at them this has nothing to do with bop you don't get up and go with them so i jump up and i'm like push hands off me and i make it very clear i told you stop running your mouth stop talking shit it's the fuck you get i'm not them you can't extort me you can't beat me and I turn around and walk off. Mind you, now I had shorts on. My knees are all scuffed up from where we hit this rough-ass dirt with this rocks and gravel and all types of just weird shit laying in it. I'm spinning the track on my homeboy, right? Hot. Hands hurt. I'm sweaty. It's middle of summer. It's blistering hot out there. And as we're spinning the track, I'm looking over there where we just got the fighting and dude is still laying on the ground. About the time we make it back to where the whole fight happened, they're helping the dude get up, and he's leaned up against the building like, I did my thing on him. Felt good about it. I don't ever enjoy hurting somebody, but in these situations sometimes, you have to get your thing off. You have to let everybody else see that I'm not the one, because if I continue to allow it to happen, well, he's not just going to do it. He's going to do it, and he's going to do it, and he's going to do it, and he's going to do it. Next thing you know, I've got all these guys trying me. So I'm going by him, and as I'm going by him, they got him up. I'm like, yo, what's up? You trying to go again? Like, we stop on the sidewalk, and I'm maybe 10 feet from him. And all his homeboys are catering to him, making sure he's okay. Damn, look at your, my God, it's John. Look at that John crazy right there. That, that bitch look like an eyeball. Look like you got a butt cheek on your forehead, homeboy. You got an elbow coming off your eye. Now he nodded your ass up, Bob. Look, damn, he dusted you off quick. They're joking around and shit. This happens. Fights are nothing uncommon in prison. And if you get whooped, a lot of times your homeboys are joke on you. I'm really hoping they'll stop this because I want it to end right here. I whooped you. Give me my respect. Don't speak my name no more. He don't say nothing. I said, what's up? You try, you try to run it back. He feels the type of way. We can get it again. We've already fought. 
to walk around that track, it don't take but about two, three minutes for me to start at the beginning and walk and get back to where I, you know, I originally started at. He don't say anything. I was like, we good? We good? And I put my hand out on some like, like pounded up. We good. We're going out a different direction, but he's all slumped up. So I just chalk it up to, he's not saying we're not good, but he's still kind of in and out of what's going on with this situation. My homeboy tells me, AJ, hey, come on, man, leave that shit alone. You, you're doing too much now. You're going to cause more. Like, you got your thing off. Let's go outside. So we peel out. Mark and these other dudes, meanwhile, are just sitting on the bench like, yo, the fuck? Dude just went in on, dude. Bob sleeps upstairs, like I told y'all, in 300 pod. And at this point in the summertime, we have night wreck, where you come outside from like 6.30 to about 8.30 at night on the yard. I come out that night and I see all the bloods down there congregating. I won't lie, my heart dropped. If I see all them having a meeting, and they usually have a designated day on the weekend that they always have a meeting. This is during the week. They're all down there having a meeting. Trail hasn't came to my cell and said nothing to me about this fight. I know he knows about the fight. As soon as we got in the building, I know the blood dudes went and told him. Jay just went in on dude. Trail hasn't said a word. So now I'm not going to lie. There is some weariness that's uh coming into play. Because I don't know what to expect going forward. Is Trail going to feel this type of way? Is he going to tell him Jay did too much? Y'all shouldn't have let him hit him that many times. I don't know what he's going to say. But he's down there. He's got Bob down there. And they're all having their meeting. We walk the track. Nothing comes of it. A little bit later that night, we come in from wreck. We lock down for count after count. Trail comes down and respectfully knocks on the side of my door. That is prison etiquette. You do not just walk up to somebody's cell like you see in the movies. You don't just boo -hoo, poke your head around the door. No. you Before you look in there, you knock. And you wait until you hear the person in the cell say, Hey, what's up, man? Or, hey, who's that? Before you look into the cell. He knocks on the door. Hey, oh. What up, man? He comes in the cell. What happened with you and Bob, man? I said exactly what you pretty much foreseen. Like, he's still running his mouth. So I was walking by him. He made his little comment, and uh, I went in. Y'all good? I said, I don't know if we're good or not. You know what I mean? I tried to pound him up, dap it up, and, and let it be dead. I don't know how he feels. Why? Well, what's up? I don't know, man. I, he, I think he feels the type of way, like he wants to run it back. I said, well, what's up then? Like, do you want to... We take this out on the yard and run it back, or or what's the deal? He's like, nah, I don't, I don't know, man. He feels this type of way, but he's not really in no condition to be fighting right now. Like, but I know he will. He like 100% feels the type of way. Now, anybody else, if there was somebody, I don't think there was anybody in this prison higher than Trail at this point. So there's nobody for really for Trail to answer to. Trail calls the shots with these dudes. I said, so what's up? He was like, long as it's, you know, he don't fuck with you, leave it alone. I said, all right, well, what if he does? Like, well, if he does, then you got to do what you got to do. But we're not going to keep doing this this back and forth shit. I said, look, I'm not to blame here, man. Before you, like, look at me like I'm causing trouble, I'm not to blame here. I'm just locked up with the dude. The dude likes to run his mouth. I handle the situation. Let him know on my behalf the shit is dead, right? I, I'm going to let him know. I'm under the impression everything is cool. I see Bob. Bob will cut his eyes at me. He, we wear these orange beanies, skull caps in prison. He's got this orange beanie on that he keeps rolled up. He's got these black glasses he got from somebody who might have nodded his eyes up. And he still comes out to the yard every day. He's not really going to chow like that because they're going to tell you, take that beanie off and they're going to see all these knots on his head. And they're going to put him in the office. Sergeant's going to question him. They're going to try to figure out what's going on. And they're going to lock him up in the investigation because he's 100% been in a fight. Commissary day. There's a dude upstairs that owes me money. This dude was in my pod. I did some tattoo work on him, and they moved him upstairs. They moved him upstairs in 300 pod. He's supposed to send somebody down with my money. My money ain't came down. Now, 300 pod has got to come down the staircase and go out the front of the building to go to commissary. So in order for me to collect my money, I've got to go up the staircase and go to 300 pod's gate and tell somebody, hey, go get such and such. Tell him, come here. And then he calls the guy, hey, what's up my money, man? Let me get that. I'm coming up the staircase, and there's a dude at the bottom holding the staircase open, holding the door open, because there's a whole bunch of dudes coming from 300 Pod, coming down the staircase and coming out. And as I'm coming up, I'm coming up the first set of steps, Bob is coming down the staircase. We have to pass each other. It's a narrow staircase, maybe, I'd say maybe three feet, three and a half feet wide, and it's all concrete steps going up. You get to a platform, it turns, it goes up again, gets to a platform, turns, goes up again. You're never going to believe what happened as I'm coming up the staircase. 
Bop pulls his foot back and kicks it. Like, what in your rabbit ass mind would make you think to lift one foot up off the ground while standing on stairs and try to kick somebody in front of you? Granted, now he's a tall dude with very long legs, so I can see where it might have worked if the kick would have connected, but it was a premature kick. It was a kick that I saw coming. He was still a good three, four steps away from me. So even with his leg fully extended, it would have stopped here like some type of Kung Fu movie. And there's a whole bunch of dudes standing down there in this large, like the front part of the building, the vestibule, if you call it, that were waiting to get back into my pod. They were coming from here, coming from there. And when he kicks at me, I just grab his foot and I step back. Because when I do, well, gravity does the rest. He boom, falls down the steps and I step to the side and I rush down the steps and I go to punch and bop in the same exact spots that I punched him before. But now we're at the bottom of the staircase and there's a whole bunch of people going into 100 pod and 200 pod. There's people coming up with commissary in their hands and well, in their bags. And there's people coming down the staircase and there me and bop are at the bottom. Bop is doing his best to like, he's doing his thing where he's like throwing his hand up sideways and he's on his side and I'm sitting on his hip and he's like trying to throw his arm up and hit me. So I eventually just push that arm down, hold that arm and just do what we call a dish rag. I drug Bop's ass. Just held his arm down, pinned him and just went to banging out with him. Went to beating on Bop. Bop connected, no punches. Both fights. I just held his arm down and just went to beating on Bop, right? This time nobody stops me. This time nobody intervenes i beat on bop until i make him say you good i'm hitting you good you good you good you done you done i'm done i'm done you got it you got it you got it i get up off of him never made it upstairs to get my commissary but old boy did send the commissary down to me i go on the spot now instead of waiting for this to come back to me i go straight to trail a trail and i'm all winded out of breath Shirt untucked, clothes disheveled. I lost my damn ID fighting staircase. Somebody else brought it to me. I tell Trey, I go to Trey's cell, and he's like, man, he can see it in my face. Not again. Yeah, man. I was trying to go upstairs. Oh, boy, was coming down the stairs. He tried to kick me. I grabbed his leg. I threw him down the staircase. And I beat him up. Is he all right? He'll live. This shit's dead, man. This is dead. Like, this is just getting crazy. We're going to end up getting locked up behind this. So he goes, makes his way out of the pod, goes out, checks on his homeboy, comes back in and tells me, it's over. Y'all not going to fight no more, man. I done told old boy, if he does anything else, he's down the trails home. He said, Yo, you mess his ass up, homeboy. Like, you went a little too hard on him. I said, what you mean, too hard? I ain't no go soft. Like, I didn't know there was a certain level of fight I could do in this. Like, you mess his ass up. He said, but look, that's what it is, man. I done told him that it's done now. Y'all ran it twice. And he's not going to win the third time unless he sneaks you. If he or anything comes from this again or his half, we're going to deal with him. We're going to violate him. We're going to stomp him out. Fair is fair. Both times he was the aggressor. Both times you won. There's not going to be a third time. Now Bob looks like he fell off a building and hit every branch on the way down. And the branches were made of concrete and fist. Super Willy Lump Lump status made me, I'm not going to lie, made me feel good because he had to walk around looking like that. I've had to walk around looking like that before. I've had my ass whooped. Feels terrible. But in this situation, I didn't lose. He's got to walk around all lump lumped up with everybody else looking at him. And when people ask, Jay beat him up. They have this meeting that day and there's not many times that gang members are going to call you over into their meeting. But I'm not going to stop spinning the track. I'm not going to change up my routine. I'm not scary. I walked a million miles, if not more. That's probably about right on that track in the years I was there. We're passing by and trail standing over there with a bunch of dudes. Jay, come here. So I go over there and I'm, I don't know what to expect. I don't know what these guys going to jump me. I have to walk where trail's at and there's a big circle of guys. And I'm standing there and trail's like, y'all two shake hands, man. And Bob looks at him like, you got to be kidding me. I'm not about to shake this white boy's hand. Y'all shake hands. I'm the first to extend my hand. I don't want this to go any further. I don't want to end up stabbed. I definitely don't want no smoke with no gang, especially these bloods. And I put my hand up. And Bob just kind of stares at my hand and has this, this look on his face like he wants to slap my hand or he wants to steal off on me. And Trey looks at him and says, I said shake the man's hand. 
He stands in for a second, makes eye contact with me, reaches out and shakes my hand. You know the craziest thing is, you fast forward about seven months. And that would be the time when me and Mark ended up becoming good friends. I told you, Mark actually told y'all, he approached me after that fight. I like the way you carry yourself, you handed your own. A lot of different dudes, I mean a lot of guys approached me after that. Now I'm not going to lie. After that whole situation, there was a certain level of concern. There was a certain level of paranoia, as Tony Montana said, a paranoia. There was a certain level of paranoia that came with it. Because I didn't know if when he called me over there, that was just a tactic to make me not feel worried. So for the coming weeks of that, I was constantly on edge. I hear noise. Walking the yard, is passing people. I'm thinking at any given moment, these guys are going to attack me. Even though I knew Trail was a good dude, I didn't know what to expect. We give it some time, we fast forward, and they're constantly moving dudes. Especially with the gang members. They move a whole bunch of dudes from upstairs, downstairs. I see all these dudes coming in, and in the group of dudes that's coming in, it comes Bob. Bob moves above me in a cell. My cell's here and his cell's above the top tier over in this direction. And it's weird how things moving forward once you've had a situation like that. Most times when you want a guy to get to fight and y'all never speak again. Don't ever talk to me. You embarrassed me. That's how most guys are. Bob's whole demeanor after that, I don't know if it hurt his pride, it hurt his ego, what it did. But his whole demeanor had now changed. He wasn't as loud as he was like I would see him in the chow hall or when he was out on the yard or he was out in front of the building or in the staircase. He wasn't loud like that anymore. He was still himself. He was still obnoxious. He still got loud, but not as loud as he was. I never expected to speak to Bob. We can coexist around each other. We ain't got to talk. We ain't buddies. We ain't friends. We ain't none of that. You stay out of my way. I'll stay out of yours. Standing at the microwave one day and I hear somebody behind me go, hey, Jay, let me get the microwave after you. I turn around, it's Bob. I said, all right, you got it. Turn my turn to the side now because I don't like this dude standing behind me. Might feel this type of way. Might stab me 150 times in my neck and kill me. So I turn to the side so now I can keep my eye on him. Yeah, I got you. Should have never let him get behind me to begin with. Yeah, I was slipping. I was in violation on that one. I finished up. There you go, bro. I walked off, went to the cell. Got my little stuff, came out to the table and sat down to eat. At this point, I'm kicking it with Mark here and there. We had you know, started off with our little friendship or talking here and there and I'm talking to other dudes. A couple days later, I hear somebody, hey, yo, Jay, who got the shower after you? It's Pop. Some of this dude always wanting to get something behind me. You got it? Ain't nobody behind me. You got it? All right. So I'm coming out of the shower. Somebody, who got a shower behind you? Bop got it. Bop passed me on top. Say, hey, good looking, Jay. We had a good rapport after that. It's crazy we had to do all that to get to that point. I guess he understood that I wasn't little Steve that he could slap around. I wasn't Jimmy that he could run up in his cell and take his stuff from. I'm not the biggest. I'm not the baddest. I'm not boasting. I have lost my fair share of fights. I've won my fair share of fights. But the saddest part of all this is I'm usually not the aggressor. I'm usually the guy that says, come on, man, I don't want to do this. Because I don't like being that person. With today's video, I am in no way, shape, or form trying to come at anybody's game. I'm not disrespecting anybody. Let's get that clear. I know there's going to be dudes that don't like hearing that I won. But I did. And if you feel some type of way about me winning, check yourself, man. I ain't never done nothing to you. But me and Bob actually, I'm not going to say we were cool, but we were on speaking terms. He was, we had the same energy as everybody else in the room. We coexisted without all the nonsense. And sometimes in those type of settings, that's what it takes. Had I not done what I'd done and handled it the right way, well, number one, I would have got jumped and I would have got stomped all the way out. Number two, had I not handled it the way I handled it, it would eventually happen either way. Because as I allowed him to talk slick and do this and do that, he felt comfortable. He felt like he could get away with it. And letting someone feel comfortable, they're going to continue to try their hand. I had no choice 
but to straighten that situation. That situation did put a whole lot of new people in my life. People I'd never talked to before. I started, AJ, what's up with you? People I didn't even know that knew my name. AJ, what's up with you? It plays new people in my life. But sometimes you have got to lay down the law. You can't always be the bigger man. This is not society where somebody bumps into your shopping cart and be like, excuse me. No, this is a hostile environment where people that make bad decisions go. This is a place where the bad guys go. And when you run into a situation like this, number one, use your brain. Figure out how can I resolve this situation without dying? How can I resolve this situation, number one, without violence? I never wanted it to go to violence. He's the one that, you know, antagonized me, called on me, and said little slick things to me, and talked about me, and put me in a situation to put hands on him. Sometimes you can't avoid it. I am glad. I'm glad I won those two fights. Because for a good time after that, I didn't have no more issues. Those type of situations, they'll weed out the fake tough guys. The guys that like to run their mouth a lot and try to scare you. The ones that don't really want to fight, so they base up and try to act hard. Oh, it'll push them straight out the way. They're not going to do that with you because, well, they know that you're actually going to do something. They'll go try that with the guys that they don't know if they're going to do something or not. But yeah, that was the story of me and Bob. And the story on how me and Mark met. I do not miss those days at all. I'm sweaty. Just in telling that story, my hands are sweaty. My palms are sweaty. Because it takes me back to a not so pleasant time. That's why I tell y'all. I love my life. Here I am on a job site. It's a big blue dumpster right there full of trash. One of my work trucks is behind me. I'm on lunch sitting in my Hummer. I love my life. There's nothing next to somebody trying to hurt my family that I would ever even consider giving this life up for. I'd seen many guys before me end up in the same situation I was in and they didn't have a good rapport with anybody from their set. They didn't know anybody from their set and it was instantly boots. Whole group of guys stomping one guy. The only thing that played in my favor was A, that I'd already been locked up a couple years. I had some time underneath my belt. And B, the guy that was overseeing them was a guy that I had been doing time with for a while. Live your best life, people. Do not do things that are going to put you in these situations. Your story is most likely not going to end like mine. You're going to get locked up and try what I just did. And if you don't know the right people, you're going to get hurt really bad. You don't have to worry about none of that. If you go work your job, if you don't break the laws, if you don't sell drugs, if you don't steal, if you don't kill, if you don't do all these things you're not supposed to do, you don't have to worry about dealing with none of that. But if you want to be a gangster, you want to be a criminal, you think you're going to run the streets and not in due time end up in there, you're lying to yourself. And when the boots come down in your head and the fists start connecting with your face, I want you to think back about me. I want you to think back about this video and how I said you didn't have to go through that. But in doing what you do in life and the choices you made, there you are. Shame on you. Sad that so many people will not listen. People hear this video and I'm sure, nah, 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 they're going to have little comments. That's all right. My moderators are going to get you up out of here. I ain't got no reason to lie. I ain't got a lie to kick it. I can switch over to true crime. Reviews, interviews, there's so much I could do that I don't have any reason to get on here and be fake. Never have I, never will I. I am who I say I am, like Papa the Sailor Man. I ain't the biggest, I ain't the baddest. But I'm not the smallest and I ain't the softest. Keep that in mind. I recommend you stay at home, pet your doggy, play with your kids, and work your job. Because ain't nothing nice going to come. I'm getting locked up. But anyways, these jails, these institutions, these prisons, these facilities, they are just crazy worlds inside of a already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life. And to all my real ones, and there are some real ones watching, because y'all still watching me. Man, y'all know how we do. Salute.